Hello, 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 friends. It's been a minute. Welcome back to the Let's Process That podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Emily Christopher. And I'm Nick Connor Camp. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Thank you guys for the grace for us to um, enjoy our families, enjoy our summer, do some traveling. Um, and we're back and we're re-energized. We're ready to go. Um, but if you know Nick and I, sometimes we don't do the best at like going ahead and being like, oh, this makes sense. Let's put a break here until it's honest. And we're like, we have no margin. We have no time. And then we're forced into a break. So, um, again, we just appreciate you guys. Thanks to those who have reached out and been like, where the heck are these episodes? We want to hear from you. So we're here, baby. Do not fret. We're back. We're back. We're recording. We got some great subjects coming up for you guys. We've already been doing some recordings, but uh, we're excited to be back. Got a lot going on. You know what's funny, Emily, is yesterday I went to the dentist to get my teeth cleaned. I did and that she today. Said, did you really? Fascinating. And how have you had time to go to the dentist and, and do a couple podcasts? Don't worry. Okay. So anyway, uh, so she looks at me and she says, how's your summer going? And I said, hold on a second. Let me think about that. I said, I don't do summers. I'm not in the school system anymore. When you're in the school, when you have kids in the school system, mm -hmm. the summer, the school system sets your calendar and you have that summer break or yeah. things change because you don't have childcare, whatever, you know. But when you get out of that, you don't have kids in the house. I don't like say, oh, it's summer. I should take some time off. Like you said, it just something hits and like, I need to stop. I need to take yeah. a vacation. You know, I, you know, I, I've lots happened in my life in the last three months with both of my kids, with my book, with my career. I've quit my job. I've got a lot of stuff going on, but it wasn't like there was a summer break or anything. And it's just so fascinating when you get out of the school system, how much it controlled your life and it doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's also the fun thing too, is like, yes, I feel like people get on the school uh, calendar, but then it's nice too to be like, oh, I'm an adult. I can take a break whenever yeah. I need to. <laughs> like, you yeah. don't have to wait till it's miserably hot outside. You can do, do a winter vacation. But yeah, no, um, yeah, a lot's been going on. Um, for those of you who keep up with us on our personal, you know, social media things or whatever. Um, but Nick, I feel like. One, I know you've been going nonstop because you just shared a little bit with me about your calendar and just what you've been doing and how you're launching um, this new organization and your consulting business. Um, so since we've been gone, since we've had our little break, um, share with us what you've been up to and have you learned some new stuff? Have you had any fresh revelations on life? Yeah, let me take just a couple minutes and just yeah. give you some facts and stuff and then we can can talk some more because I want to hear what's going on with you. I follow you a lot on social media. We do talk outside of social media, but I also leave you alone <laughs> and watch <laughs> you through social media. And um, But, you know, what's crazy is is um, I really felt uh, called to step away from my job. I had been in 100 churches over the last two years with my job. And, you know, there's 15 churches died in Buncombe County last year. And I have a burden to help churches and Christian nonprofits. That's something that I'm burdened by. I have resources. I have relationships. And so uh, in April, I stepped down from my job and started Kingdom Consulting. Um, hopefully in the next week or so, my website, Facebook will be out. I haven't been publicly posting. Uh, I just You can find it, but I haven't been make, you know advertising it just yet. But I've been doing this stuff. And so I, I've been working a lot with pastors. And one, one, the thing I just told Emily was that, I just had my first board meeting and I've put together a report of where I've been spending my time and my energy. And I just started listing the pastors that I've spent time with last month, either through trainings, through pastor breakfast, um, through going to church service or having coffee with. And I spent time with over a hundred pastors last month alone. And I just, I got a real macro view of the church world in Western North Carolina. And most of these pastors don't. They usually don't talk to each other. They got a very micro view. And so I, I'm blessed to be able to just sit with the pastor, hear what they're doing and saying, hey, I need to introduce you to so-and-so. I'm not the answer to everything, but I'm, I know the people who are doing it. So I've been doing that. I'm, I'm still, you know, my book has been a real blessing for me because in this season, when I go preach, I get a chance, you know, to sell some books. 
I had a company buy every one of their employees a book and then had me come spend an hour at lunch to talk to the employees about forgiveness. Uh, I had a church recently bought a copy for everyone in leadership, and then they want me to come in and help them walk through some reconciliation stuff. And I thought that was wonderful. Um, I've got uh, just got several things like that with the book that I've, I've got a church right now that's having me come preach in August. And they said, don't buy his book. We're buying a copy for every family in the church. And our, our church is going to be take, going through the book in all of our small groups this fall. I feel like we just need to unpack forgiveness and make sure we're not carrying some baggage. And so I'm like, on top of the consulting stuff, I'm preaching a lot, I'm speaking a lot, and I'm also the book thing. So that's going on. And then number two, our youngest son, Hayden and Hayes, um, just sold their house and moved to Florida. And um, that's that was a big move. And both of them are born and raised in our community. And they just needed some space. They just needed to get out of Dodge. They just need to go somewhere where no one knows your name, where you can do anything you want to do and not worry about the reputation of your parents or miss church for a whole month and no one, you know, give you a hard time about it. And so we had the privilege because um, because we're, we both work remotely, we had the privilege of getting in the U-Haul and driving down there with them and unpacking all their stuff. And then uh, as we were driving back, we got to the Georgia line on a Memorial Day heading home. And our oldest son, Caleb, at 29, him and Cece live in Houston. He called and said, hey, the second grandbaby's on its way right now. Can you hang a left and keep driving? So we drove from St. Pete to Houston that day. It was a long day. But we got a chance to spend the first week with little Oakland and spend some time with Rainer. And, it, you know, right now in the seasonal life we're in, we're not planning trips to California or flying internationally. All our travel times now are to Houston and St. Petersburg. And it's just like when you got your kids that move away and they're not in your in your hometown, especially when you have grandbabies, that's where you tend to spend your vacation time is going down and being with them. So it's been a hectic summer so far, launching a new business, helping both my sons get situated and settled and what they're doing. And uh, yeah, and trying to trying to keep it between the lines. That's where we're at right now. Man, oh man, yeah. And they they both picked very hot places to live. So you kind of have a little uh, yeah, a little summer all the time. <laughs> I'm waiting till winter time till we go to the beach. So we'll wait till winter time. We'll fly Allegiant some cheap plane tickets to Houston or St. Pete. Spend some time at the beach, but I'm not getting there near there right now. They're they're both running around 110 degrees right now. Oh gosh, okay, and it's yeah, it's like uh, mid 90s here, but the humidity is insane. Yeah. And just like no, we don't go outside, so I can't imagine when it gets triple digits. I just can't yeah. Imagine. Well, dang, Nick. Well, anything that you've learned over this, like all, I mean, I feel like. Transition has been your word probably for the year, <laughs> but I feel like yeah. there's been more. Yeah, I, I want to say something that's a little Christianese, but it has some very broad context. I boiled my faith down to three tenets, and 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 I'm and I'm as I lean into these three, they really apply to a lot of life. The first thing is God is love, mm-hmm. dude. If you get love wrong, you get everything wrong. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. I, I see people who are non-Christian who love well and people who are Christians that love well. But then I see non-Christians that love horribly, and I see Christians that love horribly. And at the end of the day, it ain't about what you believe. It's about how you behave. Yeah. And I think that God is love, and we need more love, and everybody needs to be kind and, and nicer. And in this season of my life, I care less about what you believe. I care more about being kind, and God is love. Number two is relationships are the operating system of the kingdom. And it's it's... Mm-hmm. It's through relationships. And I'm finding in the consulting thing, I don't have all these silver bullets that can tell you how to fix your church, your business, or your non denominate I mean, sorry, your um, nonprofit. I just know people. And I'm just like, there's this old spirit-filled saying that you'll know, Emily. The answer's in the house, all right? The answer's not far away and some mysterious, but it's in that. The, The solution to the dying church is the thriving church across the street, but they won't talk to each other. And so relationships... Is, is how we how things work. And so I'm finding that what I do is I don't have all the answers, but 
dang, I got a lot of friends. Yeah. And I put them in the room. And it's amazing how they help each other fix their problems. And it's like mysterious. And so relationships. Number three, honor is the currency of the kingdom. What you honor, you get to partake from. What you don't honor, you don't get to benefit from. And so love, relationship, honor. Those three things are three things over this summer that I've really, I've had two epiphanies, two big epiphanies this summer. That was number one is, is love, relationship, and honor. And, and that's where I want to traffic. That's where I want to live. Um, the second one, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it. It's not anything connected to the other. In 2020, Emily, something broke in me. I got to a very low, desperate place. I was already burnt out in January of 2020. I had three men who oversaw me who said, you have to take a sabbatical. You're, you're burnt out. Then COVID hit in March. All hands on deck had to cancel the sabbatical. I remember how depressed I was in 2020. And I, we live in a rainforest, so it rains every single day. I'd have to go to Lake Junaluska every day just to try to get some sun on my mm -hmm. face because sun would get my energy up a little bit. I would yeah. literally would wake up and check my energy level and it'd be at a two. Mm. Uh, Nick, you cannot lose any more energy. You just can't. I felt alone. I was depressed. I still had to lead in the church. I had to lead in the community and something broke in me. Mm -hmm. And a week ago, I figured out what it was. I, I just knew there was a piece that was broke, almost like a room in the house that you just don't go into anymore. Uh -huh. And I didn't know what it was. And a week ago, I figured out what it was. My unlimited self-sacrifice is now broken. It don't exist anymore. I can't do it anymore. I don't have it in me anymore. It is broken. And sometimes I have to disappoint people and take care of me. And I've never done that in my life. And I remember when people when knew I was struggling, they're like, you've got to take care of yourself. We all need you. I mean, there's so And I'm like, this ain't about you. I mean, you really want me to do well so I can keep feeding you, keep taking care of you. What about me? And so I just last week, I was like, you know, life is more than just sacrifice. You know, the old Christian thing, pick up your cross and carry yeah. it daily. You know, we, we, we were born to sacrifice our whole lives for everybody else's good. And I'm like, nope, we're done, period over. So those are two epiphanies I've had. I hope that gives yeah. somebody some freedom to just say, I'm unplugging that and just and just stop. Yeah. But God, you weren't created for unlimited self-sacrifice. Yeah. And so anyway, that's the two epiphanies I've had. Any response to that? Yeah. Well, it is interesting, you know, that people just take a step back and see that they don't want you healthy for you to be healthy. They just want you to be healthy so that you can, they can keep sucking the life out of you. That's it. And it is wild to get to that point. But no, I, I feel the same way. I mean, uh, definitely tracking on the, hey, if you can just focus, if we can just focus on loving people, building relationship and um, giving everybody space to be who they've been created to be, like, yeah. It's going to be okay. Um, and we get so caught up in so many other things. Like we worry about the wrong things. We stress over the wrong things. We spin in circles and it literally makes us a shell of who we are. And it's like, what did we end up accomplishing? Like, yeah. What was the point of all that? So, no, I'm with you on that. And I think I'm I'm proud of you because, of course, Thank I was you. there for um, – about a decade of that. And so yeah. watching you just give and give and give and give and give and for you to be at this point. And I feel like, you know, you're, you're out here charting new waters, but it just feels right. Mm -hmm. Like you were, like you were saying, like you've done, you've done so much in the last month, but like it, you were like, this is awesome. I'm, I'm fulfilled I'm by this. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's a beautiful place to be in and I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Hey, can I hit one more lesson I've learned recently? Please give us all the knowledge. Because I want to hear. I want to. Well, I want to hear about you. But I. Eh. Um, so, all right, there's a lot going on in your life too. So um, the thing for me is, I was meeting with a, a, a businessman recently. Since I just started my own business, I, I want to know how to do it right from the beginning. 
And I asked him, I said, what percentage of your time do you work in your business and what percentage do you work on your business? And he smiled and he said, I work 100% of my time on my business. He says, I don't swing a hammer. I don't do, I, I don't do any of that anymore. I do the, the PR. I meet customers. I make some sales. He says, but everything is macro, big picture. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. And we are killing it. And I love my life. And I'm like, wow. And, and he mentioned a couple of facts that I'm like, you are killing it. And then two weeks later, I had, I had a, a lunch with another business guy. And I asked him the same question. And he said, I, I work 100% in my business. I have to touch every job. I have to touch everything. And, 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 and maybe that's what he enjoys. I don't know. Maybe that's what he enjoys. But the, the moral of that story is this. I hadn't been to the gym in a week. And the gym is something I have to do. I have to do for my energy. I have to do for my self-care. I know that sounds crazy, but when I don't go to the gym, I have less energy. I need to get out and go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't gone in a week. And I thought to myself, well, who's your boss? Yeah. And I said, I am. And I'm like, I'm building, I'm not building a company. I'm building a job. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm building. I'm just building a job if I don't build it where it works for my lifestyle. Yeah. And I'm the only one keeping me from going to the gym and doing the things I really want to do. And it's, it's hard when you work for somebody else and you can blame the boss. You can blame the, his schedule and all that. But when you work for yourself, you can't blame anybody else but yourself and going, dang, I've been the problem this whole time, this whole time. And now I've got to face the music, look in the mirror, see it's me, and i got to make some adjustments. So, yeah, here I am midlife, and I am still learning, growing, being teachable, making changes, and realizing that the biggest problem I have in my life is me. There you go. <laughs> yep. And that's, I feel like that's how it is. Like, at the end of the day, um, we have to hold ourselves accountable. And that sucks because you want, we always <laughs> want a scapegoat, right? We always want, like, who can I put the blame on? But at the end of the day, it is us. It all, it really comes back to us a lot of the time. So. It's so true. We fall in that victim mentality all the time. Oh, gosh, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I'm interested in, Emily, and mm -hmm. to sort of segue into, into you is this. Um, one of the things that my youngest son said to me is, by moving to St. Pete where no one knows us, he works remotely, I want to figure out me without the family name, without the family business, without the expectations. I want to move somewhere, just me and Hayes, and start over. Mm -hmm. I've lived most of my life in Haywood County. Mm -hmm. you've, you've lived a lot of your life in Haywood County, but you've moved away. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you get to experience when you live in a different community than in your hometown. Like my dentist said yesterday, she said she's got a family member that lives near you, actually, and she's out in the community, and she just came back. She's doing an eight-week thing. And, and she went to the grocery store and got interrupted like 20 times. And she's like, and they were asking her where she lived. What did she do? And she says, I never get interrupted in my grocery store back in Virginia. And she says, and I would never tell anybody where I live and what I do and where they could find me. But in my hometown, there's all these different, they feel like they deserve to know what your life, what's going on in your life. So what, what have you experienced like? that you could shout back to Hayden and Hayes and say, here's the things I figured out by not living in your hometown. Oh man. Well, um, I'm, I am somebody who thinks that everybody needs to leave home at some capacity. Now, whether that's literally leaving for like a summer of your life or a year of your life, or if you just go away to college, go away to something yeah. like, I believe everybody needs to do that. Um, and again, that's my personal outlook. Anyways, um, so it's very liberating. There's and and being able to sit in that freedom that nobody knows who I am. It's kind of the anonymity. Anonymity is so lovely, um, and I've I've never really had that my entire life. So um, it was just very freeing. But what's funny <laughs> is that where I'm at and what I do now is still very much in my DNA. 
So like the other week, my friend and I went to the beach, but before we went to the beach, we stopped to get sandwiches at the sandwich shop. And we walked in, there was somebody I knew through my work and they're like, oh my gosh, Emily Christopher, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, of course we would go out and somebody would all like know you in the community. And I'm like, girl, mm-hmm. this has been my whole life. Like yeah. there is just some things like it's just in your DNA. Like I, for yeah. me, I'm like, it's part of being a Christopher because we all do public service. We all are just like in the community. We fall in love with our communities. Like, I mean, if you talk to anybody up here, like I love the 757, I love Hampton Roads. Um, and so with that, you're in the community and so people know you and all that. So it's funny, I've been here a year and a half and now almost every time I go out, I will see someone I know. Um, but I also work for a very large organization and so that happens as well. But, um, so there's some things that it, it is who you are. Like you are created and you may be trying to like escape some of those things sometimes, but when it's when you've moved and those things kind of follow you, you embrace them. Like it's a different That's thing. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, because like what I used to roll my eyes at, now I'm like, oh, that is really it's to me, it's really cool. Like it is kind of comforting because again, that's what I had in Western North Carolina. And now it's here. You know, like I love being connected to the community where I do see the people that I love out and about. I do see the people I'm connected with and um, working with and for. Um, so it's nice, but I, I would definitely say, enjoy the freedom, enjoy discovering new places and new things and like new special spots. Like, um, like I said, I've only been here a little over a year and a half and I already have like my favorite hiking trails, my favorite restaurants, like you know, things that I'm already so deeply connected to. And I, when my friends come to visit or family comes to visit, I'm like, I have to take and show these things to you. So it's exciting because like there's another part of connection to the people that come and visit that you get to share with. And I think that's really cool as well. So, yeah. And I wonder if you don't explore more than the locals because they just get used to it. Oh, for sure. Oh my gosh. Adrian has done more restaurants active. Well, first of all, he's engaged to me. So like you going to, we going to be going out and about, but, um, there's so many things like, I didn't even know this was here. And he was pretty much raised here. Um, so yeah, no, Oh, for sure. And you're, you're soaking in a lot more. And I think there's, um, sometimes a different level of appreciation. It's like, I love the mountains more than I ever have now that I live away from them kind of thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, you definitely get to discover, because you're looking at it through a different lens. Yeah. And you moved from a small community to a bigger mm-hmm. community. So there's a lot more resources. Like literally, if you want to go to a concert in Western North Carolina, it's Asheville or Cherokee. I mean, it's only yeah. two places really you're going to go. And um, and so I know that like with Hayden Hayes going to St. Petersburg, they got a lot more resources and can make new friends, can decide if yeah. they're going to go to church or not go to church, which kind of church they want to go to. You know, you know, where are they going to hang out? What's their favorite beach? They're looking for their favorite. They're searching for their favorite beach. And, and I just think that's cool. And um, so tell us what's going on with you. I saw a trip, I think, to California. I saw your brother and your sister came in. Y'all had like a family reunion. Uh, I think there's some, I mean, we'll probably need an update on the wedding. I mean, what's been going on with you? I oh, think man. you might have even changed positions at your job in the last three months or so, too. Yeah. What's what's going on? Uh a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. So definitely been traveling, uh, was in California for two weeks, um, working remotely. Adrian, um, has a really awesome, exciting opportunity with his work. He's, um, gotten to a, a leadership program, um, through what he does. And so he's actually going to be traveling once a month for four or five days at a time to all over the world, um, getting wow. to do some of his stuff and just advancing, um, which is really, does a girl get to go? Uh, I could, but this was the only one that I was really going to be able to like go. And then we actually get time together. The other ones are going to be like, okay. he's booked and busy. Trust gotcha. me. Gotcha. You know, I'm trying to hop on a plane at any yeah, time. I know you are. That's why I was asking. Um, but yeah, so California is cool. I like to go visit California and then I get over California pretty quickly. Um, but it's still beautiful and fun, but, um, 
then I saw my siblings. So I usually only see my brother once a year, my brother and my sister-in-law, because they live in California. Um, but my little sister, um, I hadn't seen in three and a half years. And so it was just awesome. And it's so funny how like things just never change. Like we <laughs> just had the best time. We were silly, goofy, all the inside jokes, all the like belly laughing until you start to cry, all the like subtle jabs, you know, like got to like our family, we love messing with, with each other. If you're not, I don't know, being poked at a little bit, then we don't really love you. So we got to be able to joke around with you and, you know, make that thick skin as they say. So it, it was great. It was just the best time. It was beautiful. And, um, I'm going to try to convince Abigail and Josh to come up here before they finish their sabbatical and head back to New Zealand. So hopefully a little more time is on the horizon before they go back. And of course, she's trying to convince me to go to New Zealand for the honeymoon. So, and I want to go to Italy. So there's that. Well, the, um, I saw a picture of all six of you in a Mm -hmm. car together and, Mm -hmm. Adrian was all the way in the back. I was like, no, you don't put Adrian in the back, y'all. He, he come on. Vo- he volunteered. Okay. Um, of course. So those of you who know Adrian, he is so – he he's Mr. Chill. He also just wants to be like, hey, how can I make everybody else like feel happy and accommodated? And he's, he's yep. like, I'll ride in the back. No big deal. So I was like, all right. So, yeah, Adrian was in the back. But, hey, we had a good time. We went out to the lake and – Again, it was beautiful, but yes, my sweet boy. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, and I was like, I'm going to have a talk with Emily. Don't you stick Adrian in the back. Nobody and puts we, baby we in the ha- corner. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. But I was <laughs> like, we couldn't. We would have a podcast without Adrian. He, I know. He does all this stuff for us. Yes. And so that's really cool for him. Uh, your job. Anything change yeah. there? Huh? Um. Yeah, I've been promoted, so that's yeah. exciting. Um, You know, it's. It's so funny how life changes and what you think you're going to be doing and like where work and career stuff goes. Um, And I'm just very thankful for the opportunity that I've had. And like I said, I work a job that's just so in the community. Like I, I see the good, the bad and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, I see like the hardships, I see like the triumphs and all this stuff. So um, I think that's why I've just fallen in love with the place so fast because I, got to see all of her kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm really excited. Got an incredible team. Um, again, if you know me, um, I'm obsessed with my team and my coworkers, but that's kind of on trend for me. If you work for me, we usually end up becoming best friends. Um, and so that's just kind of how that that's been. And it's, it's awesome. I love that. I get to share that with people that I really admire and love and we're getting to build things together. But yeah, yeah, work's going great. Learning a lot, learning a lot. (laughs) Well, I've said this to you privately, and um, I've always seen your talents. I mean, you're very talented, and people then when they meet you, they recognize what some of those talents are. But I've always admired your leadership skills. And when you took the the job um, where you're working now, when you first started, I said, you need to be paying attention to the job description of the executive director. Cause you're going to be it soon. Mm-hmm. And, and whether it's there or somewhere else, but you have leadership in you because you are good with people and you're good with culture. You set empowering culture where people can bring their best to the table and you care about your team and you're going to be a great leader. And it doesn't, you, whether you went to college for it or not, girl, leadership translates to different genres and different mm-hmm business fields. So that's the one thing I admire about you that I'm enjoying in this my this season of my life is watching you kill it outside of the church lane in a whole different lane because you've got good leadership skills. Well thank you. Well I learned from the best. I talk I, I probably drive people crazy because I'm like, so Nick Harnerkamp said this or Nick would have done this. And that like nobody's met you in person, but um <laughs> I'm just always talking about you because um, between you and my father, I feel like I yeah. have just been set up for success and I really appreciate it. So like I said, if you wouldn't have taken a, a risk on a ding dong 23 year old right out of college, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at. So thank you. Thank you. Well, and let's stay there for just a second. 
Yeah. Because, um, well, because you worked for me, with me for a decade, mm-hmm. I, and you mentioned your father because I was going to bring him up because he's somebody I learned from. <laughs> but but here's the thing about about your dad and myself and our leadership style. We lead pretty publicly, and when we make mistakes, it's we we bring it out and we talk about it. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't that Greg. I really respect Greg as a leader, and I said I've learned a lot from Greg. But it's not like Greg and I have the market on all the smart things to do. It's the, we're not afraid to say, "Whoops, that went really bad." Let's pull it out. Let's look at it together. And we and we do that in such a way that everybody gets to benefit and learn when we do it right and when we do it wrong. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that that if we have more transparent leaders like that, they end up teaching as much through their mistakes as they do through their successes. Absolutely, absolutely, and yeah, it really is the transparency part that I think is so invaluable because a lot of people obviously failure sucks. Um, yeah. But when we're willing to be like, okay, I'm going to take it and I'm going to learn from it. And I'm going to also invite people on that journey with me. Um, it just says a lot. So yeah, I, I think the transparency piece is the key to a lot. My favorite time of the week, if we were to go back five years ago, mm-hmm. was Monday morning. Yeah, That was my favorite time of the week. On Monday morning, we'd have staff meeting, and we would have a debrief. We would debrief the whole week, not just the service, but the whole week, what went well, what didn't go well. Mm-hmm. And, and we would cheer for each other. And as somebody had a success, we would laugh at each other <laughs> when someone did something bonehead. And we would mourn with each other when there was a big loss of failure, and we had to own it and had to deal with it. And um, that, I believe, is one of the real critical pieces to my leadership is we publicly had a debrief. And, and, and I was just as likely to get called out as anybody else was yeah. if I dropped a ball on something. So I, I appreciate you saying that. And Greg and I both, that's one of the qualities that we cared about was transparency and culture. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's making the safe place, which is the culture piece. Because when yeah. people um, know that I can – bring my failure or my mistake and I'm not going to get thrown out or yeah. like smacked up a, upside the head kind of thing. Um, then people will be very quick to say like, Hey, I dropped the ball or Hey, I need to be honest because they're not fearing that they're going to get tossed. And yeah. that's that, that culture piece is essential. Um, and Absolutely. I feel like I'm learning more about culture right now than ever before. <laughs> Yeah. And it, for anybody listening out there and you're an aspiring leader or growing leader, Liz Wiseman wrote a book called Multiplier. And that's what she talks about. She says that you're either diminishing the brilliance of the people that work with you or you're multiplying it. And one of the ways to multiply it is is allowing them to bring all of themselves to the table, giving them full credit. There were even times when I would give someone else credit on our team, even though I did 90 percent. And they would look at me like, you know, I barely touched that. And I'm like, you know, I got enough change in my pocket right now. You need some and I'm going to give it to you. And and so learning how to, that the most valuable resource we have is the people that work around us and the job. And this is a fascinating thing. I, 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 I'll i say this tomorrow. I'm speaking at a, a men's thing tomorrow about fathering. And I'm going to say this about a father. As a father, if you have four kids, you need to parent those four kids four different ways. Mm-hmm. What works for one kid doesn't work for the other kid. And a lot of parents just totally miss that. You know, I'm the mom, I'm the dad, I'll tell you what to do, you have to do it. And whether it works or not, it doesn't matter. I'm the parent, I get to make the rules. Well, then some of your kids are going to thrive and some of your kids are going to really struggle. And learn, you're the adult, so learn how to adjust how you discipline one child versus how you discipline another. How do you encourage one kid versus encourage, how much freedom you give one kid and give another. Well, the same thing is with leadership. When you get in leadership, you can either make everybody else adjust so that you can be your best, or you can adjust and make everybody else around you better. And if I do my math correct, if I'm the only one that has to adjust, but everybody else gets better, that's good leadership right there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. And and I just don't, I guess sometimes it's just so funny that people don't want to do that. They don't want to adjust so that everyone thrives. And everybody 
enjoys their time together, enjoys their work that they do, the mission that we're all going towards. Um, and, and I think, yeah, that, that the, the key to that is that humility part too. Um, because a lot of people, there's so much ego in leadership. Um, and so when we can get rid of that ego piece and just silence that thing so that we're really bringing everybody up alongside of us, it's so, so important. Um, cause man, that gets missed a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And you think about how much time we spend at work mm-hmm. and with coworkers and many times we spend more time with our coworkers than we do with our family. Oh, for sure. I mean, so we, we are remote two days and then in the office three days. And I got you. even that, like that's still seven and a half hours a day, yeah. three days. And so I'm going to like you, <laughs> like how I want to learn you to where I can enjoy us being around one another, because I can't imagine seven and a half hours around somebody you can't stand. No, absolutely not. That does not sound like yeah. anything I want to be a part of. And that's why, thankfully, like I said, my team, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you guys. Like, and that we hang out outside of work because we can't get enough. We need to be, we want to be in each other's lives and we want to create deep community. Um, and even when I went dress shopping last week, two of my coworkers are two of my very best friends and they came with me. And people are like, oh, that's so funny. You you brought your coworkers. I'm like, yes, we talk every day. Like even when we're not working, like on the weekends, yeah. we're in a group chat, you know. And I genuinely love these two girls so, so much. Like they're like family to me. And that's the kind of people that I want to work with. Like if we're going to be building something and spending all these hours together, let's do it with people we enjoy. And I know all of us don't have the privilege of that. That's definitely something I feel like that's happened to me, uh, just so happened to get blessed with these two people. But also I put in the work to know them and vice versa. Like I put in the work to know like, Hey, what pisses you off? Hey, how can I make things better for you? When do you feel valued? Is it when I say something to you? Is it when I write you a no? Is it when I bring you a gift? Is it when I take you to lunch? You know, those kind of things. So it's, it's taking those extra steps. And like you said, Everybody on my team is very different. So we I have to lead and adjust to make sure that they feel seen, heard, and appreciated. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating to me that at the very end of my pastorate, so I'd been doing that 23 years. And so I, only in the last year or two, if you'll remember, we had the benchmarks that we would do every month, the, your measurements for your evaluation, the scorecards. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and it's funny to me, I talk to, to, to leaders today, and I'm like, if your employee doesn't know what's going to happen when they get their evaluation, that's your fault. I mean, they they should know right now if they're doing a good job, if they're hitting or not. And so we would do scorecards and stuff. And towards the very end, I started asking this question. I'd say, what adjustment would you ask of me? As a leader, is there anything that I could do that, to, what adjustment that I could do to make you more productive and enjoy life more. And I'd have one employee say, I need more communication. I need a little more time with you. I need more communication. I'd have the next employee say, I need you to leave me alone. Just, we already know what to do. Just leave me alone. I got it. And so it's just fascinating when you take the time to ask them, because none of us know what it's like to be under our own leadership. We think we do, but we don't know. And it's not until we ask the the person that's working with us to say, give me some feedback. And there might be say, if we could touch base 10 minutes once a week and just, that'd be great. Or, Mm -hmm. um, or even could you put more stuff in writing? Because you, you just rattle off a bunch of stuff. I forget one of the things you said, but there's lots of stuff we can do. And I just think that I love it because of this, then work becomes life. There's a lot of people compartmentalizing and they have the workspace over there and a lot of people hate their job. And then they they do it just so they can enjoy their nights and their weekends. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to live I don't want to lose all those hours at work just so I can enjoy the nights and weekends. And that's what I love that you're doing for these people is they get to enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, absolutely. So I know you're not a TV guy, really. Nope. Do, you have, do you have Apple Plus? Apple TV. 
I don't think so. Uh, okay. There is a brilliant show called okay. Severance. It's on write Apple. It down. Yeah, write it down. Write it down. So uh, it's very fascinating. But the concept is that these people have elected to have this surgery that gives them like basically switches off their brains or changes their brains. So like when they go into work, they're one person and they have a whole personality. They do all this. But as soon as they leave the office, they like go through this like transmitter thing and then they have their another life. They don't know anything about their work life and they know nothing about their personal out of work life. And it is wild. It was, it, there's only one season. They're filming the second season. Um, it was one of the only shows that like on the season finale, I screamed because it was so well done. Like at the end, I was like, what? That's crazy. Um, but really well done. And then kind of leads people into this whole concept. Like, is that what you're doing? Like, are you going to work as one person and just like getting by and surviving, which is what most of them were doing. Cause they didn't know they had uh, even families. They didn't know what their outside work life was like. And then they go outside of work and they have, you know, uh, marriages and children and all this stuff. It was just like the craziest concept, but anyways, a great show definitely makes you think. Um, cause I do wonder like how, how much are we segmenting those parts of us? And it goes into, Oh, well, you're just trying to survive. Well, that's icky. I don't want to just survive 40 hours a week. Like that's a chunk yeah. of time. So yeah. Or but, just, and even thinking about the 40 hours, work mm-hmm. a job you don't want to work. Yeah. I mean, like, really? Why? And, and you know, I, I'll, I'm going to say something. Um, the Champion Mill in Canton, North Carolina has been a blessing to our community for over 100 years. I'm just mm-hmm. going to say that out loud. Yeah. Recently, it closed, and 1,500 people lost their jobs. And that is traumatic. That is hard. That is crazy. But most of those jobs were six days on, six days off. It was really hard to build a rhythm of going to your kids' ball games or to ha- having a business on the side or any consistency because the mill schedule really took over a large part of their lives. And those folks that did it, did it gladly. A lot of them loved their jobs. I just wonder how many, I'm celebrating that. I'm not demonizing that, I'm celebrating that. And I'm also wondering, I wonder what new stories are going to get written Mm -hmm. by saying, you know, I was at the mill for 15 years. I got used to that. I enjoyed that. I had friends there. But now I have an opportunity to reinvent myself, to start a business, to move away, to stay here locally, but work somewhere else. And it's going to be interesting how they respond to that. And I love change. So to me, I'm like, oh, wow, that season's over. Okay, we can celebrate that. But now let's move on to the next season. What's this going to be like? And I know that everybody likes change as much as I do, but I just, I romanticize the new start they get to have. Yeah. And so many times there's so much more that we don't even realize until we get forced into it that's or it. something yeah. switches. I mean, that's how I was. I was like, oh, I can double my salary. What? I can have more flexibility. What? You know, so there is a lot of, there's just a lot of things that um, we, we think we're very limited, but really we're, we have so many possibilities. And um, I, I, yeah, I know, I know we're always on this podcast being like, go after your dreams, chase your dreams, try something new, but it is out there. It really is like, especially if you're in there putting in hard work and that kind of thing, there is somebody who is willing to pay you a lot more probably for those things. Like if you're good at what you do or you have excellent work ethic, there's more. There's more. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. And th- uh, there's a sports uh, radio commentator that he's he's always about the move. Mm-hmm. The, it, the move. If you're not getting what you need, go to another market. Move, move. And, and his thought philosophy is most of the times you have to move to get a promotion. Mm-hmm. you're usually not going to grow your way all the way up to the executive director. Usually you have to leave the organization for them to miss you. Mm-hmm. You go somewhere else, you learn some skill sets. And it's the same thing with sports and coaches and all that. Usually you have to leave and go to a different place. Yeah. And then they get hired back at their old alma mater after they've proven there was success somewhere else. And people are afraid. And I'm one of the people that I wish I had moved more in my lifetime. Mm. 
because I've, I've missed out on a lot of stuff because of responsibility. Yeah. And so I am, and, and hopefully what happened to me in 2020 is dealing with some of that inside yeah. of me. Yeah, for sure. Well, dang. Well, Nick, our time uh, is up. My goodness. Wait, I got one question. Oh, one okay. question. Yeah. Did you get the dress? Ah, uh, I did. I did. And it's stunning. Well, and of course, me being as dramatic as I am, the girl's like, what are you looking for? I said, I want something that is show-stopping, jaw-dropping, never been done before. And she's like. That is awesome. She's like, that all right. So you. I was like, I sound like Lady Gaga saying that, but I'm serious. And so I found it. I found it. I found it. And I'm very excited. Good. Well, I'm really happy. Um, look forward to seeing you. Um, and glad that you're doing well. Glad you're doing well. I mean, it's been probably three months since we last talked. And both of us have been through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, I would hate to have come back and say, so Emily, what's happened in the last three months? And you're like, nothing. nothing. There's a new TV show on. That's that's it. <laughs> and, and you know, that's just not what we, you and how you and I live. Yeah. And I'm delighted to see all the new things that we're doing. Excited for you. And I'm over here cheering you on, girl. Hey, and same to you, Nick. I'm excited. that You're just getting started. I'm like, dang. If that was just the first month. I'm, I can't wait to see what else in six months when we have this conversation. Sounds so good. friends, we thank you so much for uh, tuning in, catching up with us. We have some incredible episodes on the horizon. We are very, very excited. Some of the people we've talked to, some topics that we're discussing. Um, and you are always welcome to write us. Let's process that podcast at gmail.com. If you have anything, you're like, hey, you touched on this. I would like you guys to explore that more. Or, hey, I am interested in hearing you guys interview somebody in this field or with this background or whatever. So send them our way because, again, this is us processing and talking through stuff, whether it be something lighthearted or something more deep. So we want to hear from you. Uh, make sure you're following us and you've subscribed on all of our social media. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that's it. Do those things and we'll be happy. Thumbs up on all these episodes. Um, thank you to our producer, Adrian Vosh, um, to this incredible music that was written and produced by Caleb Honorkamp and all those marketing photos by Allison Frost from Before the Foundations Photography. We will see you guys at the next one. Bye-bye.